Hello everyone, uh, my name is Alex Guidi. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. And today I'm, we are going to talk about working with multi-platform containers image, which is OCI index and manifest list. Hi, I'm Luigi. Um, I'm the team lead for the CID, which is the cluster integration and delivery team, um, where we, we basically are the owners and maintainers of OC Mirror. I don't know if you know the OC Mirror plugin that basically copies images, bulk images from one place to another. Um, so the talk is about the, the hard work that we've gone through to get manifest lists or OCI indexes to work. So with that, I'll hand over to Alex. We are basically going to, to share the experience that we have and what we learned when working with the OC Mirror. So basically the agenda is talking about a little about the context, uh, about building software on the container er era. We are going to give a little problem which is building containers images in multi-platform way, a solution, and the we are going to show the implementation of the solution. So let's talk about the context, how to build con software on the container area. So nowadays, the distribution of software as containers, what we call containerization, is a very common practice. I think everyone already knows. And it becomes a common practice because it brings a lot of benefits like portability, efficiency, agility, security, faster startup, and flexibility. So that's why it's a common practice today because it brings all of these benefits. So in summary, containerization simplifies, simplifies the deployment, improves resource utilization, enhances security, make it a popular choice for modern software de delivery. But what's the problem? Like building software and delivering it as a containers does not guarantee that this is going to work on all operating systems and CPU architectures. For example, in this picture here, the container was built only for Linux AMD64. It means that the container will not work in other CPUs like ARM64 or PPC64 and others. So how do we solve it? Probably the first question that comes to mind is, okay, but I always use Podman, Docker. I never saw this problem, always work it. Why is this now a problem? And the answer is Podman Docker identifies the operating system that the, the command is running and also the CPU architecture, and downloads the container image for that specific computer. But it also means that someone built the software previously, the container image, I mean, for the different OS and the CPU architecture. Like in this picture, we can see that there are a lot of containers, one for each architecture and OS. So, but how is the solution to, to build it? So we have OCI, which is the com open container image. And in the OCI, we have OCI image index specification, which is implemented in tools like Podman, Docker, allowing them to identify the correct container image to pull based on o the OS and the CPU architecture that the command is running. But before understanding, OCI image index. What is our OCI image specification? Basically, the OCI image specification defines what is a container image in an in a OCI way, which consists of an image index, the first box on, on the top, which is optional, the manifest, what, uh, and a set of five system layers, and also configuration. So basically, in the manifest, we have a configuration which teaches how to build that container image using the layers. And the goal of this specification is to enable the creation of interoperable tools for building, transporting, and preparing containers image to run. It's basically a way to create a standard, so we, we can build a lot of tools on top of it. So here is an example of the OCI manifest specification. Uh, image manifest provides a configuration and a set of layers, as you can see here. 
in the line uh, three, we have the manifest, the media type, and then we have the layers on the, uh, on the line nine. So, uh, so the manifest provides a configuration, the set of layers for a single container image for a specific architecture and operating system. So for each operating system and CPU architecture, you have this manifest. And then we have the OCI image index specification. An image index is a high level manifest on top of the, the previous one, which points to one or more image manifests. Each image manifest is for a specific platform, OS and CPU architecture. So as you can see here in the line three, we have the, the media type, which is the image index. And then we have two manifests inside of the line four. It's like a, an array. And the first one is for Linux PPC 64. And the second one is for Linux AMD 64. And they are going to point to a manifest, the, the one that I previously show, showed. So this SHA that we see in the line eight and 17, it's the SHA that points to the previous manifest, which is for the specific uh, architecture. In the previous Docker specification, the image index was referred as manifest list. That's why in the title of the talk, we say OCI index image or manifest list. So, but in the OCI standard is Im image index. So in summary, to get started of, of how to build the, the container for multi-platform, we need to build the container image for each platform, OS and CPU architecture that the software is going to support. Then we add manifests generated in, in the step one in the OCI image index. Having these two steps implemented, we allow tools like Podman and Docker to pull the correct image based on the OS and CPU architecture where the tools are, are running. So now I will pass to Luigi. Thanks, Alex. Um, so I know this is the late session, and um, uh, what we're going to do, well, we actually thought about doing a live demo. Um, and I've, in the experiences I've had with doing live demos in conferences, even if you actually uh, do a sacrifice to the demo gods, it still fails. <laughs> um, and then the second thing is what we thought about maybe do a canned demo and then, you know, do a video. And, you, you know, the audio here, you don't know how it works. And we've actually had experiences where we still had to do a, a read-over, basically, a voice-over. So what I'm going to do is actually we took the simple solution of just saying, here's the code on the screen. Have a look at it. We have a repository at the end that you can go look at and play around. So, a simple Hello World Go program. So for those of you who don't know Go, uh, basically it's using a, a runtime library there, and it's gonna just use the runtime library to show the underlying architecture that we're using. And obviously print Hello World. Very, very simple, very basic. So, you know, the whole keep it simple, stupid rule. Okay, this one bears a bit more um, sort of explanation. It is the container file or Docker file. Um, and it's using the Golang base, uh, 1.21 in this instance. Uh, we're labeling it as build. So this is going to be the, our base builder for Golang. We're going to create a, a make dir, copy, um, uh, basically have it uh, mounted on, on Gobin directory, change the work directory, and then copy our simple main.go to that, to that uh, basically work directory. <coughs> Sorry. Then obviously set up some arguments, uh, bringing the um, OS and the ar architecture, and then finally run go build, which is basically packaged in the Golang one-to-one Alpine. And the reason why we've gone that way is it's simple. It's, it's easy, very sort of small footprint, not large. And uh, I think this, this whole thing comes to about two meg without even stripping the binary so you could really get a nice small image. And then line 10 from scratch. 
So Scratch is a very basic open, empty container, you can call it. You can't run it, you can't execute it, but you can use it within your, your build process. And basically what's going to say, the very next line is your first layer. And the first layer is actually our build binary, which is slash hello. And the entry point, obviously, is slash hello. Um, <clears throat> so what we did, we sort of decided on a simple bash script to, um, instead of each step running and building our architectures, we just said a quick, here's a quick bash uh, script that'll list the, um, that'll iterate through the OS, um, go through each architecture, in this case AMD, ARM, and then build, we, we use Podman for everything, so j for this example anyway. So uh, just run a, a Podman build, uh, pass the architecture, pass the uh, OS, and then um, as you've seen there, we've got the registry, namespace, image name, and in this case, I think it's uh, Quay.io, or Key.io for those who don't know how to pronounce it, but anyway. <laughs> um, the namespace in this instance will be eGweedy, and the name of the in image will be container multi-platform, you'll see later on. Build it and then push all four architectures to Quay.io. There you have it, you have all four that's pushed up, and you can see the sizes there, about two megs, which is, which is really small for this um, application, um, but sizable to actually work out um, and, 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 and give you a good idea of this example. Um, what we want to show here is, Scopia is Scopia is also a tool to, to copy, and what we're saying is, using the minus minus all flag, it's going to take, um, it's going to take all architectures, basically. In this instance, we're pulling the multi-platform container, Linux AMD64. We're copying it to the directory in OCI format, and it's going to then, the, 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 basically the, the manifest that gets copied will look like this. So you'll have your manifest, you'll have your uh, link to your config, and your layer, which is actually in this case the, that simple layer that we spoke about. Cool. Um, now we're going to actually go and build the, uh, as Alex, uh, Alex mentioned, the OCI index or the manifest list. Uh, again, the same, you know, Linux, the same sort of structure there, iterate through each architecture. But in this instance, what we do is we create Podman manifest create. And that will then create a basis for the um, OCI index, iterate, and then add each architecture to that index, and eventually push the manifest with a label latest to the um, repository. And so you can see there, we'll have all the multi-platform containers, and then the, the, the first one in that list there is latest, which is the OCI index or manifest list. Cool. Then we do a Scopio copy to pull down the um, latest. Also, again, in OCI format. And this is what we have. I think this is what the original uh, picture that you had in the beginning of the slide deck. And they all point to the config of each, or should I say the manifest of each um, architecture of our manifest list. Um, okay, and then finally we can say, right, let's run. And in this instance, it's going to actually run the OCI manifest, uh, the OCI index, in other words, the manifest list. And you say, uh, we, we differentiated by the uh, tag latest. It's going to pull down, and Podman knows that it's actually, we're running on a AMD64 architecture prints Hello World and says, I'm on AMD64 architecture. Now this one's a bit different. Um, we're actually telling Podman now to try and coerce it to run Arch, uh, ARM64. Uh, it runs through, pulls down the image, and then it says uh, there's a warning. 
uh, image platform does not match. Um, but then it goes and prints ARM64. So be aware, some tools uh, and, and uh, uh, like Scopio or Podman, they, they actually will, you, you think it's running on an ARM64 architecture, but it's not. The, the, big, the big thing there is line number seven telling you that it's not. And um, basically, that's it. Uh, alternate, the, uh, as, as an exercise, and we leave it for you guys to, to play around with, is to um, use Kimu and virtualization and create um, your, your uh, architecture for each, uh, so for ARM, for S390, and then run the, uh, uh, run the applications there. And... Um, and see how it goes. It's actually fairly interesting. Cool. That's that's basically it. Uh, any questions? Yes, go. How did you handle the signatures? Okay. The question was, how did we handle signatures in the the, the OCI index and manifest? Okay. In this instance, <laughs> there were no signatures. But yeah, um, put it this way, in, 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 in our, um, for, for our OCI, or should I say, for our OC mirror tool, is what we've done is we've actually, and, and, this is, and this pertains only to releases, in other words, the images that we use to install OpenShift. So the, just to give you a breakdown, uh, OC mirror uh, mirrors the release images, day two type operators, and then we have a, a notion of additional images. For the release, um, what we had to do is, because of the, we're using um, containers images, it has the notion of understanding where your ETC PKI uh, p uh, private key is. You just have to add in, for each repository that you're looking at, you have to add in a link to that repository and where the signature resides, and it'll do the signature verification for you. Does that answer your question? Cool. Any other questions? Cool. Yeah, Dennis. <laughs> okay, Alex, you, you can answer this. The, the question was, um, when you're mirroring, how much content does it take up? Using multi, the multi-platform, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically depends how, how many architectures you are downloading or pulling. Like, if you are pulling only your image uh, for your architecture, like we showed here, basically you are going to download the manifest, which is, I think, 1.5 kilobytes, and the, the one for your architecture, like, one, I think it's 1.9 megabytes. But if you, if you are going to download for, for the arch, for architectures, we are going to multiply this for four times. And so th that's basically the, the total of storage that you are going to, to have. Can I answer that? Yeah. So for releases, yes. In other words, for an OpenShift install, okay, we, we're speaking specifically at OpenShift, okay, so um, the context is the, the Red Hat releases. We have the notion of adding a platform, so you can say download only AMD64 releases, but if you put multi, there's a notion of having in, in our image set config to download multi-images, it's going to download how many architectures have been four. So you're going to get four times the amount. <laughs> and I think at the moment, um, if the top of my head, um, the release download is about 15 gigs. So multiply that by four, roughly. It's not exactly, exactly. So you're going to get uh, about 60 gigs worth of download just for release. Now, operators, that's, that's a different, different animal. Um, unfortunately, 
we don't have a, 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 how can I say, a filter to download. So if you have an operator, day two type operators, let's say you've got, uh, you want MongoDB, Postgres, and I don't know what other day two type operators you're using, you're going to get all, if the manifest list is there and it has all four architectures, you're going to download all four architectures. And what we're working on later is a thing called sparse manifests, where you can only mirror the architecture you want. But it's not there yet. <laughs> Does that answer the question? Yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? Cool. Um, can I add one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not sure if it was clear that how we run the one container image from one architecture in, in the other one. And that, that slide that we put as an exercise has a tip there like saying, it's our virtualization. So behind the scenes, we are using the QMU to emulate a run of a different architecture. But actually, it's not running in the correct architecture. Yeah, yeah, like the question is how, how QMU e emulates it? Is that the question? Yeah, what QMU does is it, it, sh it, it detects that the, the container that you are going to run, it's not for that architecture. Yeah. And he like brings like a VM to simulate that run on a different architecture, but at the end it's not running on that architecture, it's running in your architecture, so that's what Kimu does. Yes, correct. Yes. 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 Any other question? No. Cool. So that's well, it. Guys, go ahead. Uh, go to the, the GitHub account. Uh, Alex has made it available where we collab, collab on, on the, the content. Play around. The, the manifest list is a, it's a powerful notion. It helps um, when you're packaging all your different architectures for, for um, different cloud platforms. Um, but as, as uh, Dennis pointed out, um, it, it is difficult because you now have all four architectures, sorry, sorry, you have all four architectures there, especially for operators, and it, it really does get chunky. Um, I think uh, we t we're talking about for all, if you had the, the catalog index for all operators, you're looking at about something like, what, what did you say, one terabyte or maybe more of, of, of operator data that you're going to be downloading for, the, for all four architectures. And so we're looking at a way of when you're mirroring that um, to your, your, your sort of platform, it could be AWS in the cloud running on ARM. You only want the ARM architecture. You don't need the other, four, uh, other three. But um, at the moment, this is how Red Hat um, builds our day two type operators release, as I've mentioned, you can actually filter on platform. Cool. Thank you.